So, last Sunday, the Microsoft E3 press conference 2017, the first game that they announced was Forza Motorsport 7, and my gosh, did they do a great job. And they revealed a brand new 2018 GT2 RS live on stage, right there, which is quite fantastic. That thing's supposed to have the uh, most powerful engine in a road-going Porsche ever. I'll leave you with the trailer now. Well, that trailer... Play it on Xbox One. That trailer had to be one of the most spectacular things ever. The build up to the Porsche 919 was quite cool, and they're expected to be another, at least another 699 cars to go along with it, including the new, brand new 2018 Porsche 911 GT2 RS, which I just mentioned. Um, as like every other Forza game, it comes in various uh, pre-order editions. You have the Standard Edition, Deluxe Edition, and Ultimate Edition. Ultimate Edition pre-order owner, uh, Ultimate Edition buyers get the game early on the 29th of September, which is four days before release on or four worldwide before uh, public release on the 3rd of October, um, and then Standard Edition is just the base game. That's it. Uh, along with the Ultimate Edition and Deluxe Editions, you'll get the uh, Fast and Furious car pack, F Fate of the Furious car pack, sorry. Um, the main difference between the Ultimate Edition and the Deluxe Edition is, of course, you will get the Deluxe Edition the same day as the Standard Edition, which is the 3rd of October. Um, but in, for the Ultimate Edition, you will get the car pass along with it. Um, the Ultimate Edition will retail at 80 British Pounds, the Deluxe at 65, and the Standard Edition at 50. So I think I might be getting the Ultimate Edition, um, and I shall hopefully pre-order that soon. Um, and on to the topic of tracks, uh, Mugello, uh, Suzuka, and... Well, Suzuka's only just been re well confirmed on Wednesday, um, a couple, few days after the announcement, with a tweet by Dan, Dan the Man Greenewalt, um, saying that Suzuka has been recaptured in 4K glory, and that pretty much blew away everyone. Now, out of all of the tracks that have been confirmed to be making a return, I am most excited for Maple Valley and Mugello. Oh, why well, you may ask? That's because Mugello was one of my favourite tracks back in FM4, and I did 
like to drive it quite a lot. It had a good selection of corners, it had the chicane after you went up the hill, um, and it had the S's towards the end of the lap, which I found quite enjoyable. Um, Maple Valley, I'll, yeah, probably for the same reason. It was a good track to race, I liked it. Some track. Suzuka I don't mind as a race track. I'm not too big on it for drifting. I don't really care about drifting. Um, but I don't mind drifting either. Um, oh, what else did they announce? Oh yes, there was a hint, a sneaky hint at Forzathon. Personally, I don't really think that Forzathon should be introduced to in Forza Motorsport 7. I mean, it is cool that they're going to... Well, if it works the same way as in Horizon, they'll be just giving away cars for free, which is good in Horizon, but in Motorsport it just seems unnecessary, to say. Because I like to work getting my cars in Motorsport. Well, some of them I do. Maybe it's just convenient. Um... Oh, what was I saying? Um, I've just lost my train of thought. Um, I went to work for my cars. Um, ah, I've lost my train of thought. Anyway, back to let's go tracks. So most of the tracks should be making a return from um, Forza Motorsport 6. So we know that Nurburgring's coming back. Dubai. The Feet Mountain Mountain Pass is going to be debuting on in FM7, which is great. All cars from Forza Horizon 3 should be coming. Oh yeah, then I remember what I was talking about. I was talking about Forza Thon. Yeah, Forza Thon just wouldn't make sense in a game like um, Forza Motorsport 7. I just don't know. It just doesn't quite seem right. But you know, oh well. Um, dynamic weather. Now I'm not sure about this, but I think people will go, oh, it's dynamic weather. But no, I don't, I don't think they're really, well, it could be dynamic weather, but what it really could be is just, di they said they were going to be introducing dynamic puddles where they increase in size over time or reduce that, that stuff. I'm hoping that that comes to Xbox One rather than just the Xbox One X. Um, and yeah, and I think there was a something about there were going to be hoppers for each type of weather racing. So you could, so say if you wanted to do um, daytime racing, you could go into the daytime racing hopper, or night racing hopper, you could go into that hopper, and the same with uh, rain, do that, etc. Um, there's been a hint for um, oh, what's it called? Uh, public searchable lobbies the th the th that thing we had in FM4 where you could just go into the custom lobby system and just search for a any game there'd be meets, there'd be drag meets, there'd be cruising that sort of thing like that. Uh, the auction house is confirmed to be making a return making its return to the motorsport franchise in six years, first, first appearance in the Force Motorsport for six years, yeah, six years since Force Motorsport 4. Um, also, um, oh, what? oh yeah, there's going to be expanded esports features which should prove good for season five and beyond of the Force Motorsport Racing Championship, I'm ex because I'm expecting a season four on Motorsport 6 in Org around August time, which sounds reasonable. I assume that'll be a year after the first season, um, because that would be they would offer chances to win Forza Motorsport 7 on pre-order. Hmm. Um. What else? Um, <laughs> can't think of anything else to say right now. Uh, multiplayer should be somewhat more refined. Uh, uh, and the thing, the thing with the move, the moving little part thing. I don't like that. 
some of the parts, okay, some of the parts moving, it's all right, you know, a little bobbling around, but I think they move around just a bit too much for my liking, and so I'm not a big fan of that. The sounds in the game, from what I've heard, have been, have been significantly reworked, and I heard that from the GT2 RS, when I watched some gameplay of it, it's been work the sounds just much 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 better uh, the tank the Mercedes 24-hour tank pool racing truck now sounds somewhat decent um, and the Nissan GTR out the Altec GTR now sounds um, like it has helical helical gears tr no straight cut actually which is awesome so I'm hoping that that carries over to all of the other GT cars and on topic of GT cars I really 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 hope that they introduce the 2016 the up-to-date GT cars because from what we've seen from the trailer they're just exactly the same as they were in Forza Motorsport 6 and that's a shame because I could have had more. um the brand new Huracan GT3, the brand new mid-engine Porsche 911 RSR, the oh, brand new Corvette race on the brand new R8 LMS. I don't understand why they're not in there, but we'll have to wait and see. We've still got cars to be revealed later in July or June or whatever. So anyway, um. Um, well yeah, body kits are making a return which should appease some, though I'm not sure it would be a good thing because this could spawn a load of possible leaderboard cars. I'm looking most at the, um, oh, was it the Porsche 911 GT2 of 1995, so the 993 GT2. Because in Forza Horizon 3, that can have 365 rear tyres and 305s on the front. So it has the possibility of becoming one of the very... A possible leader car for A-Class? I don't know. Or, let's see. Uh, yeah, again. So. No, I was just going to say, Forza Motorsport 7, less than three months away. Actually, it's just about about three and a half months away now, so should be good. Um, but it's t so it's September 29th for Ultimate Edition owners, and October 3rd for all um, deluxe and standard edition owners. Well, great. Anyway, I'll catch you. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on Forza Motorsport 7 and I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know what you thought in the comments below and I'll catch you later. Goodbye!